an average of 100. Did the guy just fall off? Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. We are learning. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a, another look into more Isle of Man TT racing. We have started on this and we're just going to keep going for a little bit. Because we love it. It's so cool and exciting and it's safe watching it from the comfort oh, of our sure. chairs. <laughs> this one is the Insane Ward of Sidecar Racing. Which so, a lot of people recommended. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just fine. remember hearing a lot of comments saying, check out the sidecar, it's just as insane or something. And to me that doesn't sound as cool, but I think it does bring a lot more challenge to it. So I'm interested to see it. Well, because you have an extra person. Yeah, there's two people. Yeah. And it's also the weird looking, like, I don't even. Well, that thing, I don't think they can tilt the same way. No, I know. It's just, every time I see those in, like, real life, they just look weird. It's like, why? I have ridden in a sidecar. Really? I think so. When I was, like, What do you mean you think five. so? You just said you did. Well, I know my uncle had one. I can't remember. I think I had got to ride it, but it was with another cousin, and we were just crammed into the sidecar, and he went, you know, just down the driveway. Uh -huh. But I kind of remember doing that. So anyway guys, that's what we're doing here today. Checking these out for the very first time. Before we get in the video, comment down below if you guys are enjoying this type of content. Please subscribe and like the video if you did like it and enjoyed it. And with that being said, let's get right into it and check out the sidecars. This is sidecar racing and it's absolutely crazy. They are three wheeled Whoa. bikes that can hit 160 Ooh. miles an hour on the residential oh streets of the Isle of Man. But what's incredible is that it takes two, two people, people to, to drive, drive this thing. thing. One on the controls and one manipulating the balance of the bike. Ah. And controlling this thing at that sort of speed with walls, curbs and blind crests must be Jeez. terrifying. But not as much as being the passenger whilst doing that. So today, let me explain the engineering and the insane driving skill behind sidecar racing. That was not this is a Formula this. 2. I was not expecting that they had, I thought they just kind of sat there. I know, but no, they have like a huge job of balancing out everything. I feel like that's, to me, it seems way more dangerous than riding it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the, it might be more balanced as a driver. Yeah, but not still taking turns at the I guess speed. if you throw the person off, then you lose that balance. Yeah, I think you'd have to stop the race. This is a Formula 2 sidecar, around 130 horsepower, 350 kilograms, including the riders, and a top speed of well over 160 miles per hour. They run Whoa. standard 600cc four-stroke bike engines and racing slicks. The speed they travel at is honestly astonishing. Now, sidecar like racing is huge, with many different classes and events, from okay. circuits like Brands Hatch and Alton Park, to the scariest of them all, the Isle of Man Snaefell Mountain Course. Yeah. The Isle of Man statistically the most dangerous races in the world, and by quite some margin. The number of horrific crashes is endless, but despite this, oh my gosh. hundreds of racers across bikes, superbikes and sidecars rock up every year to take it on. And whilst wow. I do moan about organizers making tracks too sterile at the moment with massive runoffs, the risks at the TT are far higher than I personally would take. One misjudgment yeah. or one mechanical failure could send you off a Ooh. hill or into a brick wall. The track nice. weaves through tight island roads for 38 miles with tight sections and more open weaving sections where riders are flat out for minutes at a time. These sidecars manage an average of 120 miles per hour around these off. 200 turns. And to put this into perspective, the top class of superbikes, which are far, far lighter, manage this with a 130 miles per hour average. The TT is a time trial event that is held over a fortnight. One week of practice, and you're going to need every minute of yeah. that, and a week of races. They set the right. Which, okay, so I wasn't. Quite so if it's only a week of practice, that means you're out there practicing with everyone else. Yeah, but you I don't, think so. You probably never get the lap just for yourself. Right. I, you can't same. tell, but I'm clutching my hands together. This is so nerve-wracking for me watching. Yeah, this. I think I think Parker's. I think they're trying to get down as low as they can for the like the wind. Yeah. 
Like and for speed, so they're not in, uh, Well, that the center of gravity is lower, so they can, you know, distribute and you're going their weight to need that way. Every minute of that and a week of races. They set the riders off 10 seconds apart. So whilst you are racing the clock, if you're quick, you have to put in some ballsy overtakes oh. too. If you want to see loads of quality footage on oh, this, check out the free warning channel linked below. And thank you to them for supplying a lot of the footage for this video. And this track would be terrifying in a car with four wheels and a roll cage, one driver and the ability to take left and right handed corners at the same sort of speed. Mm but sidecars have none of these things. But before we get into it, some lingo. The sidecar itself is called an outfit. The person on the right is called the driver and the madman who's hanging off the side is called a passenger. Anyway, that from an engineering perspective, what makes these sidecars unusual is that they aren't symmetrical. They have two wheels in line and then one on the side. So when I'm driving on track, whether it's in Catrums or Formula One cars, you get a feel for the car's cornering ability and then apply this to both left-handers and right-handers. However, these sidecars actually take right-handers far quicker than left-handers. And this is down to, in right-handers, the outfit leaning on that sidecar wheel, where in left-handers, the whole thing wants to tip over. Years ago, these Thanks, outfits yeah. used to look more like a bike and sidecar. However, now they are bespoke racing units with Jeez. advanced aero and much improved performance. They are powered yeah. by no, a single rear like wheel, the one, one behind the driver, and are steered by the front wheel through some very small handlebars. They can also outbrake superbikes down to the huge slick tires and the enormous car brakes that stop all three wheels. And oh wow, that's crazy that uh, they use car brakes on a more, like a, yeah. it's not a motorcycle. A so the, the third tire doesn't even have brakes. It's all dependent on the main bike, I think is what he was saying. Huge slick tires and the enormous car brakes that stop all three wheels. And look here, they use flat each. racing tires rather than the rounded bike tires, so they mm. have a much larger contact patch, so more grip in the corners and especially. So it's more like a race car in that sense. There's yeah. that kind of aspect. Yeah, that's like you said, they can yeah. brake a lot faster because of that. Yeah, actually, on the brakes. Now to the question I'm sure you're all wondering what about the dude on the back? Well, they are called passengers, or more casually, monkeys. And that kind of <laughs> makes sense. These guys have to be yeah, incredibly fit sense. just oh, to geez. hold on at these speeds and g-forces. Their role is to maintain the balance of the outfit. Without them, the sidecar just wouldn't work. It would be minutes a lap slower around the TT course. So, so I wonder on uh, the passenger if it matters like his weight and size. Like, I wonder mm. if the weight would help hold it better, Maybe. but they wouldn't go as fast, or vice versa. Yeah, I could see that. If you're too wouldn't little, you work. may just it would be enough. minutes a lap slower around the TT course. So they cling on, staying out of the airflow on the straights and I hang see. off either side around the corners, essentially making up for the uneven handling of the sidecar. Around right-handers, they climb over the top of the driver to keep the weight on the inside tires. Then on left-handers, they hand precariously yeah. over the side of the bike. And this is the bit that looks the most sketchy. They very often skid their backs along the surface of the track and can even get knocked off yeah. if the driver gets it wrong. Along the straights, they duck out. Just How spins back off. I know. I mean, maybe he wasn't going as fast as he can looks, even get geez. knocked off if the driver oh, gets it gosh. wrong. Along Ow. the straights, they duck right out back. of the airflow, then pop up in the braking zones to add as much drag as possible. Then as the driver booty turns in pads. <laughs> Booty pads? <laughs> you know, butt pads. I'm even more worried about my back than my butt. Well, I know, but still, like, if you're hanging over in a road rash, you probably have some sort of padding out of To the corner, they have to quickly but carefully get in position so that the bike sticks. So, so in a they probably have to memorize the map just as well say, as the driver. It seems like they keep looking down to get out of the airflow, but how do they know when the next turn's coming? They just probably memorize the map. Yeah. They have to quickly they can see. but carefully get I mean, in position I mean, so that the bike sticks. So in a car, you trail brake into the corner, meaning you gently release the brake pressure as you enter. This is all to transfer the weight of the car as gently as possible. On a sidecar, the driver is still doing this, but with the added component of another person moving around too. And it wow. must be so tough to coordinate these two things perfectly. Some passengers even count or feel the bumps. Also, they don't need to pop their head up to see when the next corner is coming, which around a 38 mile lap is mighty impressive. As you can imagine, it takes enormous trust from both parties. The driver has to trust that the passenger will be in place to give him grip when he needs it. 
then the passenger has to trust the driver that he's got his estimations right. The passengers hold on to a few specific handles. The main one thing I do like about this so far is the amount of teamwork. Yeah. Like it's very interesting just like the you dynamic. You really have to each practice per a lot. Each person is totally relying upon the other. Yeah. You can't do it alone with that kind of vehicle. The estimations, right. The passengers hold on to a few specific handles. The main one is in the center of the bike. The riders hold this through the highest G sections, the braking zones, where they have to be up pretty high on the bike whilst the driver is on the anchors. Then there are several smaller holes around the side guard for the cornering sections, as well as a specially shaped platform with places for the passenger to jam their foot in okay. for grip. It really because that's one thing I didn't know, so obviously they're not strapped in, and that's probably a safety thing, because yeah. well, I, I think, I'm guessing, I, uh, that it would be better to be thrown from it yeah. than being strapped to it. Because then it could on. be like, if you get flipped or something, I mean, you're going with yeah. it. Yeah. It really is like rock climbing at 150 miles per hour. Now, what I find <laughs> mad is also what the driver has to do. It's not like a car where the grip is more predictable and the balance of the car is pretty steady. The most a car changes is when the tires wear or the fuel burns off, both of which happen slowly and predictably. But on these bikes, if the passenger isn't in the right place at exactly the right time, the bike won't have the grips you expect it to. There really are two people steering these sidecars. But the thing I can't get over is the enormous risk that every driver takes on this track. Many of the riders have rituals where they hug their families every time they get on the bike at this track, even in practice. There are too many crashes, many of which are tragic, so you can imagine the nerves when sat at that start line. But as we all know, all motorsport can be dangerous, and we go into it knowing the risks. The skill, composure, and dedication from these riders demands huge respect. One thing I had to find out was how do you build up to doing this. How do you first learn the ropes in hanging off the side of a sidecar at silly speeds? Well, just like what karting is to single seaters, miniature sidecars is to sidecars. These are awesome. They are called mini F1 sidecars and they race on kart circuits. The racing is brilliant with some awesome battles and some massive sends. You can really see how the passengers move the way around, getting on the inside of each corner, hanging way off the side of the outfit. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't expecting a dialogue, honestly, because <laughs> I hadn't checked out the video before. Right. I just saw sidecars. I'm kind of uh, happy for it, though. He explained that really well, and I got to understand it a lot more. I feel like my brain is just, like, learning so much right now. I mean, we did over -talk, uh, talk over him a little bit, so I do apologize for that. Uh, I'll make sure to put the link to the, his original video in the description if you guys want to go check it out. But he did a good job. And no, he did an excellent job, yeah. Like, sidecar racing this channel? is really interesting. But Driver61. Yeah. Appreciation for him for yeah. making the video. It was definitely, yeah, it was almost, to me it was almost better than just the completion because he was actually like explaining yeah, what was going on. Yeah, with his personal experience because he's a driver. Yeah, so for us Racer. it really helped because this is the first time <laughs> us checking out the sidecars yeah. at all. So guys, coming My out, limited experience didn't explain anything. <laughs> well, no, I never been. Oh, you're, I'm down the road, John. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not a legit sidecar is probably involved the attachment type. It was more for like, yeah, attached to normal Because I think that's how they do motorcycle. it over here is it's just like an attachment that goes on the side of a motorcycle. Yeah. I could be wrong. It's though. not like built together. That's insane. I, I actually, I don't know, in some ways I would, would almost find that more entertaining to watch. Personally, Maybe. that's just my personal thing. It's less, it's not as fast. It is slowed down, yeah. Yeah, slow down, but it's just watching the team work. Yeah, the talent really impressive. is, I'd say probably equal to the other kind. To the normal senior class. We will learn and <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> it's just great that yeah, you guys host this and that you haven't made it simpler. Oh. Because I really yeah. do feel like the uh, motorcyclists that do the race will probably really do appreciate it because it's yeah. something so unique and different than the standard tracks that are probably relatively safe. It's like racing on history. Well, just that and like more old school racing. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, that is the video. We'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, please be safe, take care, look after one another, and comment down below if you're going to be at the Isle of Man this year and what you guys think of it. So, anyway, guys, that's it. Cheers.